northern wilderness of Alberta. Barren, beautiful. Home of the bighorn sheep, moose, bear. There are hunters here, but they're not stocking big game. North of Edmonton, the muskeg yields to a desolation of frozen lakes and ice. Here lies nearly 90% of this country's crude oil and 80% of her natural gas. Geologists estimate that up to 20 billion barrels of oil and from 1 to 7 trillion cubic meters of natural gas are hidden beneath the surface. Exploration is difficult, costly, and sometimes dangerous. The severe cold lowers the efficiency of the work crews. But exploration must be done during the winter, when the ground is firm enough to support the equipment and the roads can stand up to the weight of transport trucks. Springtime brings warmer temperatures, budding plants, and mud. Lots of mud. To escape being trapped, equipment must be removed to a summer site before the thaw. Equipment weighing less than 10 tons can be transported by helicopter. But heavier equipment must be transported by truck well in advance of spring while the roads are still winter firm. Climate and weather are not the only problems. Heavy equipment must be transported, but in many areas, roads cannot be built for economic or environmental reasons. Helicopters can airlift some equipment to these remote areas, but they are limited by a 10-ton payload capacity, expensive operation, and a few limited range. A new technology is needed to unlock the resources that are out there. Waiting. At Mercantile Ventures Holding Limited in Edmonton, company president Ray Sutherland is proposing a new industry for Alberta, an industry to produce air transport vehicles that will have a range several times greater than the helicopter, will be less expensive to operate, and can carry up to 150 tons. Vehicles that will open previously inaccessible areas to development. The heavy lift airship. the latest in rotor and static lift technology, making it the world's most versatile and economical vertical lift air transporter. A heavy lift airship can save millions of dollars each year for the resource development and heavy construction industries and open development of the Northwest Territories. These industries could gain as many as five to six additional weeks at the winter sites by leaving crews at work until the actual onset of spring then removing heavy equipment, supplies, and personnel by airship. Beachheading a project could be accomplished in a much shorter time with less expense. The range of the airship alleviates the need for some road construction, construction that is expensive, time-consuming, and sometimes detrimental to the environment. Transmission tower construction will be more efficient with the use of the heavy lift airship. When helicopters are used, towers must be transported in sections. The airship could carry the completely assembled tower, lower it into place with the same precision achieved by helicopters. The airship could also be used to string the transmission lines. Standard shipping containers could be airlifted to ships anchored offshore. The airship could offload ships in areas lacking deep water ports or where port congestion is a problem. When a pipeline reaches a river crossing, trucks often must go long distances out of the way to find a bridge. A heavy lift airship could save an estimated $165,000 per crossing. 
By eliminating new road construction, the industry could save $1.5 million per year. The extended range of the airship will make it possible for the forestry industry to work areas far from established roads. The airship would carry equipment useful in fighting forest fires. By replacing the payload with a captive gondola, the airship could transport firefighting personnel. The airship can transport its own portable mooring mast and can be moored in almost any flat, clear location. It can work in remote locations for an extended period of time with no need for a permanent base of operations. Airships have a long record of rigorous service under adverse conditions. During the Second World War, they escorted Allied naval convoys, served Coast Watch, and performed radar reconnaissance missions. Not a single vessel was lost while under airship escort. All of these airships were built for the naval service by the company most closely associated with lighter than air, Goodyear. Almost everyone has been delighted by the sight of the Goodyear blimp. The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company owns and maintains the world's only flying fleet of airships. Goodyear has more than 70 years of continuous active involvement with airships, including designing, producing, and supporting more than 300 airships of various configurations. The early airships, like the Akron and Macon, were rigid types, supported by a latticework of lightweight metal. Other airships, sometimes called blimps, use a non-rigid envelope filled with helium, an inert, lighter-than-air gas. Goodyear constructed the world's largest non-rigid airship for the United States Navy in 1959. 123 meters long and containing 42,500 cubic meters of helium, the ZPG-3W carried a crew of 21. The U.S. Navy set an airborne endurance record in another Goodyear-built airship by flying 11 days and 14,500 kilometers without refueling. When the static lift of the helium exceeds the weight of the envelope and payload, the blimp will rise. By releasing helium from the envelope, the blimp could be made to return to Earth. But this method is impractical. For this reason, conventional engines are attached to the blimp, and large airbags called ballonets are placed inside the airship. On existing airships, these airbags are inflated by air ducted through air scoops located behind the propellers. They are deflated by valving. Air temperature changes, as well as changes in pressure altitude, expand or contract the helium. And the ballonets compensate for this volume change. Although the gondola appears to be attached to the bottom of the airship, it is in fact suspended from cables attached to the roof of the gondola, which extend through the main envelope to two catenary curtains sewn into the topmost fabric. Cables support not only the gondola on the heavy lift airship, but also the star frame to which the engines are attached. In theory, an airship could lift heavy objects without using a drop of fuel because of the helium added to the envelope. But once the payload is released, the airship would be very light. So the heavy lift airship uses rotor power to lift the payload. The helium offsets the weight of the airship, allowing all the energy of the engines to be devoted to lifting the payload and propelling the vehicle. Mercantile Ventures is proposing the construction of a 115-meter prototype airship that will lift 60 tons. The cable system supports a star frame, 
with four propulsion modules, each having two engines powering horizontal thrust props and rotor blades. A helium-filled envelope provides lift for the airship, including engines and gondola. The rotors supply lift for the payload. By comparison, a helicopter uses nearly one half of its total rotor lifting capability and fuel to lift the helicopter itself and keep it in the air, leaving only half of the lift applied to the payload. Since all of the rotor lift in the airship is applied to the payload, there is a quantum increase in lift and payload capacity and a considerable savings in fuel. The facilities and the technology exist today to build a production prototype heavy lift airship at Goodyear Aerospace in Akron, Ohio. And with Goodyear's willingness to trade its technology to accelerate the opening of a world market, the proper capabilities are in place for a successful venture. The establishment of any new industry normally is accompanied by production risks associated with new technology. Mercantile ventures will minimize or even eliminate these risks by obtaining technical support, knowledge, and assistance from Goodyear Aerospace. The airship is simple in principle, but complex in refinement. Goodyear Aerospace combines 70 years of airship experience with modern space age engineering. This simulator performs a computer analysis of abilities of the heavy lift airship to operate with a variety of payloads in a wide variety of environmental situations. Research indicates that the airship will be able to perform in remote areas as well as areas under aircraft traffic control. The airship would have joint U.S.-Canadian airworthiness certification. Goodyear uses the latest technology in the design of the heavy lift airship and has conducted a number of computer modeling tests on several design configurations. Phase one of the Mercantile Ventures proposal calls for the construction of a prototype, a functional heavy lift airship capable of carrying a 60-ton payload. The prototype will be used to demonstrate uses for the airship carrying power transmission towers and heavy construction equipment, offloading ships, transporting people, and other uses yet to be determined. Once the prototype airship demonstrates its versatility in payloads, endurance, fuel economy, and extensive range, a worldwide market will be established, and a demand will be created for the heavy lift airship. The airship industry will create jobs in Alberta. The airship itself will find an important place in Canadian industry. It will open the door for exploration of the energy-rich frontier. The risks have been minimized, and the potential rewards are great. Not only for the people of Alberta, but for all of Canada.